international importance and from all around the world. Today I'm focusing on my favorite, well one of my favorite directors, Federico Fellini, and we're going to talk about his Opus La Strada, starring his wife Giulietta Massini, Anthony Quinn, and Richard Basehart. I love this movie. My first Federico Fellini movie was Juliet's Spirits. I must have been about 14 or 15 when I watched it at Dartmouth Film Society in Hanover, New Hampshire, and I loved the surrealism of the movie. It was probably one of my first non-Hollywood, but also first European movie that explored techniques and utilized techniques that involve symbolism. I've loved Fellini ever since. I think that Julia of the Spirits was my first Fellini, La Strada, it was my second. La Dolce Vita might have been my third. E Vitiloni was my fourth, and Alma Code was my fifth. I really like that, Federico. So, La Strada is a tale of Gelsomina, who is sold by her mother to the strongman Zapano, who had had Gelsomina's older sister Rosa travel with him for a year. I don't know what happened to Rosa. I think that she might have croaked or something, but he returns to the village and asks uh, Josephina's mother if he can have her too. And he pays her 10,000 lira, which isn't very much money, but she has children and to feed, so she sells her other daughter to the strong man. Last weekend, I watched it entirely in Italian on YouTube. I couldn't find it under subtitles. And if you watch it, and it's, and because I love the movie, and I knew the plot, I was willing to watch it without translation. So if you do happen to watch it in Italian, um, you will think that the acting is sort of hammy. But Giuseppina is playing a simple-minded creature who is taken advantage by Anthony Quinn's brutish ways, okay? So they travel the road, that's what La Strada means in, in Italian, uh, earning money where they can. He teaches her how to play the trumpet and drum. And so as he, you know, breaks iron across his chest, she's his chorus while it's going on, and they pass the hat for money. Fellini conceived this idea through various ways. He started to um, think about his childhood a lot, his wife of five years, Ju Juliet Messina, who plays Gelsomina. He loved the pictures of her as a little girl. And then one night, commuting, he saw a man pulling a cart and a woman pushing it. And he started to think about the brutality, the, the, the brutal, uh, the brutalities that occur to people as they're trying to make their money traveling on the road. Now, this plot is very simple, but complex at the same time. At one point, Julieta wanders away from her strong man's wagon and meets another uh, traveler named El Mato, the Fool, played by Richard Basehart. They strike up a temporary friendship, but as winter's coming on, Josephina and Zampano get hired by the circus where Amato is working. Catastrophic events occur because of Anthony Quinn's jealousy towards Richard Basehart's character. I'll let you watch the movie to check it out. 
as a teenager who, without any cynicism, and my heart full of romance, I laughed throughout. I laughed throughout most of this movie. I can't believe I was so hard hearted as a kid, but when you see Anthony Quinn do his thing and he's rough and gross, gruff and all tough, and then when you see Julietta Messina play his simple-minded traveling partner, she sort of, um, it looks kind of corny. And then Richard Basehart, he's hysterical. So the, serious, the seriousness of the movie escapes me as a teenager. However, even as a teenager, when I saw the end of the movie, I was still, I don't understand why I was still sort of laughing, but I think the tragedies of life when you're younger don't seem as don't seem like tragedy, tragedies. They just seem kind of comic and bittersweetly funny. The screenplay is by Fellini and Tullio Pirelli and Enil Flaliano. The music was composed by Nino Rota. It was released in Venice, September 6, 1954, distributed by Paramount, and it did win the Silver Lion at Venice. Produced by Dino De Laurentiis and Carlo Ponti, it also starred Aldo Silvani, Mocella Rini, and Livana Venturini. Sorry, my Italian's a little bit rusty. Um, when the three scriptwriters showed this script to Luigi Ovea, who they wanted to produce it, he started crying. He read the whole thing, and Federico was, I've got it. And Luigi said, this is literature, it's not a movie, it's a masterpiece, it's, it'll never be filmed. You, you won't make a dime off it, but he said, you won't make a lira off it, which, which I, I kind of liked. While he was directing E. Vitaloni, uh, an autobiographical movie about his youth in a village, this is how he conceived the plot. So it was a long brewing process, uh, this, this story. He was able to call his cast from a movie called Angels of Darkness, Dona Provite, directed by Giuseppe Amata. Valencia Cortese was married to Richard Basard at the time, was in the film. And Fellini saw Richard Basard, thought he would be perfect for Amato because he reminded him of Charlie Chaplin. I'm quoting a lot of this from Wikipedia, by the way. And Basar uh, was like, well, uh, yeah. He saw E. Vitaloni, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll be in your movie. Anthony Quinn, who plays the strong man, was hounded literally for days by Federico. Please, you have to be my strong man. Uh, many people were considered, for various reasons, Fellini did not want to use them. Finally, Quinn is at Ingrid Bergman and Roberto Rossellini's house one night watching Andy Deloney, and he was totally amazed. He was flabbergasted. He goes, this guy's been chasing me down for days trying to get me to be in this movie. So, of course, he was in the movie. Giulietta was a no-brainer. Now, De Laurentiis, who is a producer, wanted to get rid of Giuliani. Oh, pardon me, Giulietta. Uh, he didn't c consider her... Uh, suitable for the part of Zampano's Paramount. But when Paramount saw the rushes, he quickly decided to throw her a contract but played, paid her only a third of what Quinn was playing. Um, Quinn at the time was also working for De Laurentiis doing Attila the Hun. So he had the most gruesome commute. He had to get up at 3.30 in the morning and prepare for Fellini's movie and then drive to Rome to do Attila. And he said, uh, you know, I was haggard for Zampano. I looked haggard, which was great for, for Zampano's role, but not quite what we wanted Attila to look like. It wasn't okay that Attila looked haggard in the, in the movie. Uh, 
Fellini also had a nervous breakdown during the end film, filming of the shoot, but he kept it a secret and was seen as Freudian psychoanalyst at the time. I think sometimes directors just throw themselves into stuff that they just keep going, going, going. They can't get out of it and they need all of their mental survival skills to, to survive their artistic process. One last thought. Lestrade received the Silver Lion at the Venice Film Festival. The judges didn't really pay too much attention to Lucino Vicante's Senso. His assistant, Franco Zeffirelli, who went on to direct uh, the famous Romeo and Juliet, blew a whistle during Federico's acceptance speech and was then attacked by a friend of Fellini's, Moraldo Rossi. Shades of Paris in the 20s, when Cocteau, Stravinsky, Nijinsky, and all of them would cause fistfights over what was art and what was not when it came to theater and film. I think that that's it for me today. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. I hope you've enjoyed St. Laveau's World Cinema. We're going to explore Federico, Federico some more in our next episode, and I hope you've enjoyed the show today. Please check out La Strada. You will enjoy it immensely, and while you're at it, also check out Eva Filoni, Um La Dolce Vita, and what's that other one I love? La Strada, La Dolce Vita, oh, Julia of the Spirits. Uh, until next time, darlings, take care and stay away from those bad movies. Ciao.